if I have to say a few things about the positive thinking in a very essential way, then I would say, stop being a responder. Realize your true power as a creator of your thoughts and choose to create the world that you want to live in. So the three aspects is one, not being a responder, but being a creator. Uh, the one who creates uh, the own thoughts and to choose what is right and what is good. Not just for self, but for everyone. And that is the essence of uh, positive thinking. And we will learn more about this today. I will uh, initially give you an overview of what the common um, knowledge is about this uh, subject. And then we go into some more understanding so that we can have a good handle. Uh, so I was looking at uh, um, some of the websites to see what is, what they, uh, what people talk about the when they say what they know of positive thinking. And uh, some of the definitions, uh, the essence of the de essential definitions that I found was uh, some of the components I found were uh, number one, approaching an unpleasant, unpleasant um, uh, situation uh, with a more productive uh, manner. Uh, avoiding uh, uh, a presumed negative outcome or, or something that perceived, I perceive something bad is going to happen and I want to prevent that. And how I can prevent that with positive thinking. Um, an optimistic attitude or uh, um, outlook to, uh, to prevent harm. So everything that, all the knowledge that I saw was geared to this preventing something bad from occurring or something bad is happening. And now uh, we're trying to prevent this. So this is the common understanding. Uh, so, and then the, some of the tools uh, that I saw were uh, to, to do the positive thinking were focus on the good. If there's a bad happening, what do you do? Focus on the good. Like a, one of the common thing I saw was uh, something like if there's a blank paper and there's a dot drawn by somebody and then uh, the audience is shown that what is this and so most people will focus on the dot so it's not the dot that you think about you think about the bigger picture which is more blank so things like this so the teaching about where to focus not focus on the bad focus on the good uh, and then um, a half empty glass and half full glass example uh, so these, uh, that's what I saw in the website, uh, and it's all good. But uh, I, I saw that uh, it does not always work. I have a bad situation in front of me, and I start to think, no, this is, uh, I start to create some positive thoughts. The situation is still in front of me it still will get me. So sometimes I will succeed, sometimes, sometimes I will fail. Uh, 
So it is being pessimistic or optimistic. If I'm more optimistic, then I will succeed. If I'm more pessimistic, I will fail always, no matter how hard I think. So it, to me, it implied that we, we need a better understanding of first, what is thought, and second, what is positive. So they, we, we always talk about think positive, think positive. And when do we say that? In medical field, we say think positive when somebody is ill. So uh, the person is already ill and you're telling this person to think positive. The first impression in that person's mind is, how is it possible? I'm already, I'm having a problem. How, am I, how can I think that I'm, uh, I am uh, healthy? You know, things like this. So I thought about this and, uh, First, like I was saying, we need correct understanding of the thoughts. And second is correct understanding of what is positive. Um, so before we go into that, because once we know that, that correctly, then we can really create it. Uh, before we go that, I want to all just detail into more common understanding as to what is negative, uh, what they think is, what we think is, I should not use the word they, but we are, we are the part of that, this society. So we think, what we think is uh, positive and what we know is the solution. How we, how we derive, how we achieve the positivity, how we bring it. Um, some of the examples when we see of the negatives, so then we understand what is positive. What is negative? If something happens, then I uh, have a blame game. Either I blame myself or I blame somebody else, right? So that's one, one set of negative. Uh, something called as a filtering. I filter out what is good and I just keep what is the bad. Like a 10 good things happened to me, but I only remember one that was bad. That's filtering out the goodness. And then I highlight that bad thing. So I heighten it. Uh, I Sometimes I make it so big, something called as catastrophizing. You know, I could have a small illness, but I make it so big as if some, uh, you know, this is incurable. Uh, then um, having a conviction that nothing is going to help, you know, that, that kind of a mindset. So all these are negative thoughts. In comparison to that, the, uh, the positive that uh, we think that we, uh, we know is also not that uh, powerful positive. And that may be the one reason why we are unable to really uh, create that positivity that we want. Uh, example of some of the examples of positive is um, have, have gratitude, you know, have a feeling of gratitude. Um, let's say I lost something, but I feel I feel uh, thankful that I have so many other things, but I still feel the, the pain of the thing that I lost or, or the person that I lost. Oh, so I still have that, um, that negative uh, situation in front, that positive, uh, a thought that I create does not have that power to remove that. Then uh, some other examples is, uh, you know, being mindful, for example, be in the present. Don't go in the past, don't go in the future, just present. But you know very well, our mind wanders back and forth. And the more, it's more back in, in uh, future than now. 
So it requires a lot of struggle to be in the present. A lot of practice too. So that, uh, it's a good tool, but then does it really make me positive? That's the question to ask. Then uh, things like uh, have a nice support system, have good friends, be in the company of the good, smile with them. Fine, but where am I going to find good friends? Where am I going to have good support system? Who am I going to smile with? Do I really can? Do I really have a power to smile? Um, and then, of course, taking care of yourself as a body, you know, good diet, good exercise, sleep. We do that every day. We try, and uh, we still have problems in front of front of us. <clears throat> and then, uh, building resilience. You know, we. Um, the one way to uh, one way suggested way to improve the positivity is building resilience. And uh, how do we build resilience? How do we become strong, able to withstand uh, the stresses of the life, uh, and still uh, not only survive, but still be very functional, very effective. Where can we get that kind of resilience? Uh, you know, some of the suggested uh, uh, methods to build that resilience is to have a good uh, support system like that I was talking about. And, and then uh, accepting, accepting that, you know, bad things is going to happen a focus on your strengths rather than in your weaknesses. Uh, so, but the question is, are we really that much resilient? Do we have that power? Um, then watching yourself, you know, what you're creating. Am I creating positive? Am I creating negative? So watching my thought and then reframing or you know, changing my thoughts. Let's say I'm creating, I see myself that I'm creating lots of negative thoughts. Then how am I going to change to positive? How am I going to reframe? Um, and then to reframe, I really need to know what is positive. Uh, one classic example uh, given is you are in a traffic jam and you have five minutes to reach to office and you are stuck in a traffic and you are half an hour away from a work. And now you're trying to reframe. You're trying to change your negative thoughts and bring in positivity that this is good. I have the time to now sit in silence. Can you do that? I cannot. <laughs> so I'm not criticizing anybody. I'm just pointing out what we know. There is something missing that we, when we know that, yes, this is how we can achieve positivity. Um, uh, some, um, some of the things about the positive, uh, the positive thoughts is why do we have to create positivity? Medically speaking, you know, when you have a positive thoughts, you are generally healthier than than not, you have longevity that has been found in by studies. Uh, you would have a higher immunity, but that's just the medical advantages, but there are social advantages. Every which way, positivity is the way to go. So there's no two things about that. Um, you know, and the power of positivity, um, you have 
good relations, you are successful, uh, you are a winner, if you have positivity. So every aspect of life, it is important. And so it is, it is important to know, not just for medical reasons. Um, mental health is great if you have um, positivity in your life. Um, and of course, uh, spiritually, you are a much better if you have a positivity. So let's, let's look at the, um, some, of, uh, some of the thoughts that I have to see how we can uh, create positivity. Um, so what is missing is realizing uh, that the thoughts, uh, first thing, uh, I will come to the, the, um, the topic that what is thought and uh, what is positive. But before that, the thoughts can, uh, the realize, we need to realize that the thoughts cannot change. We cannot change the one set of the thoughts by other sets of thoughts. Unless we, the creator of the thoughts, realize that we are the one who creating the thoughts. So unless you realize, you the creator realize that you are the one who is creating the thought, then your thought process will remain the same. You could be thinking that you're creating a positive thought, but it is still, it does, it is still not as powerful as it should be, not as positive as, as it should be. Not that it is not positive, it is positive to some extent, but we want to create positivity to have an effect. We just don't want to create positivity to look good. You know, I have some, I have a problem in front of me. I need to be able to create positive thought so that that problem is out of the way. That's how much powerful I need to be. And we can be, we can be. So realize that the thoughts that we create cannot be changed to the, the thoughts when we remain at the same level. Um, same level means if I, I think I'm a body, I'm this person, unless I change myself, I will not be able to create a positive thought. And um, we will look at it to how we can change. And that changing is, doesn't mean that I need 10 years. It's in the mind. So we will see how. Um, so when I do a cer certain action in the body, uh, it's the action. Uh, when I move my hand, it's an action of my body. How does the, how does the mind act? The body acts by moving. How does the mind act? The mind acts by, because mind doesn't have a body, arms, legs. Mind will act by, by creating a thought. So the action of the mind is the thought. Action of the body is the movement, the speech, the words, the facial expression. But the action of the mind is the thought. And the thought creates everything else. Whatever we do with the body, it is the root of that is a thought. You see how it works. So the mind, the karma, karma of the mind or the action of the mind is the thought. And we all know mind is something not tangible. Tangible 
spiritually, but we can't see it. We can't, we can't dissect it out like we do for the brain, right? So mind is something non-physical. So it's a part of the soul. So it's the soul who create the thought. It's the thought is the action of a soul, the karma of the soul. So that is a true definition, not a definition, but true understanding of a thought, what a thought is. It's not a, um, a process generated by the brain. It comes from a much deeper level, from soul level. And once we know this, oh, that, that was the, that's the thought, then you, you begin to understand how you can possibly create positive or negative. Second aspect then is what is positive? What is negative? What is good or what is bad? Who can tell? If I'm a player, right? And I'm a playing a game. I'm a football player and the opposite team is there. And if I win, it's good for me, right? But then for the other person, it's a loss. So is it a positive thought that I win over the other? Something, something to think about. In a business, if I make a profit and the other person make a loss, let's say whatever I do to gain that profit, I would think that's positive for me, but it's negative for the other person. So I say, yeah, that's good, that's positive for me, but the other person says that's negative for him. Um, so many examples you can take from this world and you can say, you can put a question mark as to really what is positive. If I help somebody with money, is it really positive? Because uh, what if I'm making that person lazy? What if I make, make the person dependent on me? I'm helping this person with money and the person stops working. Then I really have not helped this person, but I think that I created something positive. So there's a question mark as to really what is positive, right? So how do we know? positive and negative. Well, for that, again, once again, let us consider the who we are. We, are the, we say that we are the soul, and as a soul, we are creating the thoughts. We are acting, and we are creating the thoughts. So if I am creating the thought as a body, then uh, it is a worldly a way of communicating. I'm acting in a worldly manner where it could be questioned as positive or negative. We don't know. But if I'm acting from a level of the soul, from pure purity, if I look at, if I consider myself as a soul and then if I create a thought, it necessarily would have to be more positive because as a soul, I am peaceful. I don't have the, the peacelessness or disturbance, then what thought I will create will be of peace. 
So that is a higher positivity. And it's, these are not just the two ends. These, uh, these are a whole spectrum from being a body to being a soul. We right now, I the soul am in the body in a total body conscious stage. That means I'm completely not aware that I'm aware. I understand in my mind that I'm a soul, but I'm really not that. I'm really acting as a body. That's one spectrum, but once I learn to be a soul and be more closer to my true self, then I begin to move towards the positivity. The more I move towards the positivity, the more positive actions I generate. More positive thoughts I create and the thoughts are converted to the actions. So that's what is missing, the spirituality, the, the essence of who we are. Um, and another aspect of positivity is a negative thought. So one difference between positive thought and negative thought is where it is coming from. A negative thought is coming from a body end of this whole my spectrum. And the positive, pure highest positive thought will come from the soul end of my spectrum. So that's one difference, positive and negative. Second big difference is a negative thought will be weak, very weak because it is coming from a very low level. It is arising from a low level. Low meaning uh, with less powers. It, it is powerless. A thought is created, this person is bad. That thought is powerless. It doesn't sustain, the nature doesn't sustain that thought. The other, the highest positivity, this is a pure being. The, uh, the other end, that's a powerful thought. A huge difference. A positive thought will sustain itself. The things will not decrease it. One thought will be equal to thousands of negative thoughts. It will remain for a long time. The negative thoughts will fizzle out within no time. Then the question is, why we feel negative all the time? Why we have so many, why, why we have so much sorrow, right? That is because one, we are unable to create positive thought. We are, we are at a level we are not able to create anything positive. We think that we are, but we are, un, we are not actually. And the second is, we are creating a lots, lots of negative thoughts. Millions of them. So million little ants can kill one elephant. That's how it is. You can, you can probably create a very strong, positive, powerful thoughts. But then if you are fighting the million negative thoughts, you will die. That's what it is happening. So we need to learn to create that positive. And it's very simple, it's not complex at all. We just have to open up and realize 
who we are, and then practice. And once you practice that you, you are the creator of your own thoughts, then you begin to automatically create positivity. You don't have to struggle. You don't have to even think what is positive. You know, because that's what you are. You know. So let us uh, let us uh, let us take a pause here and uh, and meditate for a few minutes, and then we'll go on further. So just uh, let's base this meditation on what we have learned just recently. Because I believe that you, if, if you know what you're going to meditate about, then it becomes more powerful. You understand it better. So what we are going to see is we're going to uh, meditate. Uh, we're going to realize that we are the soul and we are peaceful, powerful souls uh, who are the creator of our thoughts. That's, that's what we want to realize. And let us feel it. Let us not just learn it by the words, but really understand it through our hearts. Because once you understand, then you really know it. Then you really have experience. And that, exp that experience is the greatest teacher. So <clears throat> close your eyes. And Focus your attention to your breathing. Take slow, deep breaths in and out. And follow your breathing. Go in as the breath goes in and out as you breathe out. Silence every other thoughts. Just focus on the breath. Now, as you take a deep breath in, Let your awareness flow from the lungs into the bloodstream. And travel, travel to the brain. Bring your awareness at the control panel of the brain. The area that controls everything. And just stabilize yourself at that place.
Continue to be aware of your breathing simultaneously. Now visualize or see yourself as a living energy in this body. who is sitting at the center stage, controlling the breathing, controlling the mind, controlling the brain through the mind. and the whole body. Gently open your eyes and look out to, through the windows of the eyes, the physical eyes. Remain focused to your breath. Remain aware that you are a non-physical being in the body, looking out. You're also now aware of the outside world, but you are also close to your inner self. You're aware very much and you're realizing that you are a silent being, a peaceful being. There could be a disturbance outside, but you know you are peaceful. You're projecting out the peace in that disturbance. You are also aware that you are a loving, happy, a very powerful and very knowledgeful being. You have found the treasure. The treasure will not, the treasure that will not perish. You have found yourself who is very powerful, very peaceful. Very wise, intelligent. More intelligent than the scientist. You also realize that you have the company 
of a divine force. that is guiding you in a very incognito way, in a very secret way. Energizing you from within. Keeping you clean. With this awareness, bring your consciousness in the present realize that you have the power to reach to this inner self anytime you want. You have a power to come out and be your normal self in the world. You don't have to struggle. Let me share some of the, the thoughts that I have put in as a PowerPoint. to reinforce what we learn. So this is a very, very basic understanding and very important that we are the soul in the body. And this realization helps us uh, understand that we are limitless. We are very powerful. We have the good qualities, the positive qualities. And with this understanding, we will always create positivity. Even if you want to create negativity, you will not be able to. When we have a total understanding who we are, As a soul, we have three um, faculties. These are actually part of the soul. You cannot say there's no boundary between mind, intellect, and sanskar, but these are the three different functions of the soul. The functions are the feeling and thinking, understanding and connecting, storing and recreating. And so the thoughts, the, today's topic, how we create positive thoughts, it is through the mind. The mind is the most closer to the body and the sanskar or the impressions, or you can say deep memory is the most subtle. Mind can be still be more like a body, you can you can, it's more tangible. And then less tangible is the intellect and this is the least. But this is where we create the thoughts. So you can understand this picture is important to know why for the creation of the thoughts because the thought is coming from deeper self, 
our deeper self. It is coming from what I hold as the impression. Let's say I had a negative interaction with somebody and I hold it with me. And the next day when I see this person, this negative interaction will be the basis for my creation of the thought. So I'm working from here to there, that one. From my sanskar to intellect to mind. And so that's the understanding. That's why I brought this picture. We have seen this picture before. Um, let's look at this one. You know, elevated thoughts. Um, the thoughts are positive, mundane, waste, and negative. So this is a positive thought, and this is a negative thought. So in between, you have mundane thoughts, you have waste thoughts. Positive thoughts are very elevated thoughts, very clean, very pure. And we'll look at some examples. And negative are, of course, we know negative thoughts. Waste are are neither positive nor negative, but they are wasteful. These two in between are neither positive nor completely negative, but they, uh, they're not very useful. So example of the elevated thoughts, positive thoughts. These are the thoughts created naturally. I don't have to struggle to create. I did not struggle to create this, uh, the, the elevated thought. The thoughts that can transform impure me to pure myself, the thoughts that are created without the feeling of attachment, any of the vices, without the, without the negative inferior feelings, feeling of attachment, greed, anger, ego, et cetera. Uh, the thoughts without the desire for personal gain. And the thoughts with the goal of the larger good, you know. So benevolence, thought, the benevolent thoughts would be elevated thought. So you can just sit for a minute here and think how or what kind of a positive thought I can create. Try to do that as a body and see if you can come up with. It will be really hard, really hard. So the method to create that positive thought is to become silent, to go deep in your subconscious and to go to your true inner being and be that inner being and then create positive thought. Then yes. So as a pure soul, now think. In a split second, bring your awareness to that soul consciousness that you had for a moment, just a few moments ago and think that you are an invisible being in this body and now you're creating a thought. You are a peaceful, powerful, prosperous, loving being. And now you're creating a thought to the situation when interacting with the others definitely you will come up with something positive. So that's the method. This is the example of inferior thought. Desire for the fruit. I want something for me. Let's say I give money to somebody, a beggar because I felt pity. 
it's not the giving, but it's taking. I gave because I felt bad. I felt bad for myself. I can't, I can't, I did not feel comfortable. And to become comfortable, I gave money. And now I felt comfortable. So did I give or did I take? I took comfort by giving money. You see how it is? How at a body level we create a negative which, is, which looks like positive. So uh, a thought that is created with a feeling, feeling of greed, jealousy, all the vices. A thought that is created with, with the impure intention, definitely negative. A thought that is affected or influenced by happiness and sorrow. A positive thought is not influenced by happiness and sorrow. A positive thought is not created to feel happy. Very important to know. I gave money to someone to feel happy. Negative. Negative. Because I did it for myself. I did not, did not give it as a selfless being. And then anything that is done against the divine power and created, created to cause harm to others, these are negatives. Um, so let's look at this one. You know, uh, we just saw that it's a mind. We create thoughts in our mind. So what is mind? So mind can be, you can understand mind like an ocean in this example of ocean. Um, you can see the surface of the ocean, but there's a lot more deep down also. This is the conscious mind. Conscious, yeah. Conscious mind, where there are waves. Okay. Conscious mind, on the top layer, you have waves. Where does these waves, where do these waves come from? And what creates these waves? There are two factors. One is outside and one is internal factor. Outside is if there's a wind, a gentle wind or a storm or whatever, that is creating the waves. And the inner is there is something inside that is creating these waves too. And that is a, something called as an inner current. Inner current. Um, let me see this. Yeah. Uh, the at this point, let me let me um, let me explain. The question is: uh, happy thought. Explain more about having a happy thought isn't a positive thought. Uh, a thought or an action that is done to feel happiness for myself. That 
could be considered as self selfish kind of an action, not very positive. It could be positive, yeah, I, um, I did something to feel happy. What's wrong in that? But that does, that we are looking at the power. We are looking at creating something that can really help me, that can be really powerful that I can use for myself and for the others. <clears throat> That's the power of positivity we want to learn. <clears throat> This uh, kind of uh, positive uh, powers that we have learned in the world, it is good, but it's not good enough to be that strong being that we want to be. That's, that's how I would explain why my uh, um, why my intention of being happy could be not very positive. Okay. And I hope that answers. Now, this one is also a conscious mind. You see, big wave. So there could be big, huge waves, or there could be just silent waves. The both are conscious mind. They both have there's something that guides them, outside wind, and then something from inside. Have you ever seen an ocean stop creating the waves? Never. There's always a wave. The wind could be completely silent, but there's a wave. So that's the wave. We call it as... Um, in English, we call it as attitude. That's the attitude of my mind. That's the attitude. And that attitude is driven largely by deep inside what's in the ocean, not from outside. I mean, there are things outside that will guide, that will guide my attitude, but that will be a a less powerful force. The bigger force comes from inside. Okay, so we will look at that attitude. And, and uh, as you go deep in the ocean, you go into this, what is called the subconscious mind. Conscious mind, and then there's a deeper level, subconscious mind, not visible. Conscious mind is, I'm aware, I'm thinking, I'm feeling, but then there's some deep things that is happening that I'm not aware of. That is subconscious mind. Some people also add unconscious mind and godly conscious mind, but it's all deep hidden part of mind. What is it in this deep mind we need to know? And that is actually the force that creates that waves. And these waves are the waves of the thoughts. These waves are the waves of the karmas. And that's the attitude, that's the connection between the, um, between the uh, non-physical to physical, that wave. So something that is intangible to tangible, where does it, that line comes? At the level of the attitude at the level of the waves, at the level of the thoughts. You can't read my thoughts, but these thoughts are the initial level of what I'm going to do physically, what I'm going to speak, how I'm going to behave, what my body language is going to be, what kind of vibrations I will create out. It all occurs from that level. And that, the, the, the origin of that is right here in the deep part of the mind, in the subconscious mind. That's where we hold our memories. Whatever we have experienced in the past, we hold here. 
the deeper you go, the more ancient memories there are. What I did yesterday, it is there in my topmost superficial layer. What I did one month ago, it's deeper. One year ago, even deeper. Last life, deeper. So the deepest level that you can reach is the where place where you were completely pure, positive, powerful being. So to reach there in your mind with your intellect is the goal. So when you reach to your deepest level of your subconscious mind, you touch your innate self, your natural self, and you be in contact with that one, then you are the winner. You are the creator of the, the most positive, powerful thought. One powerful, positive thought will destroy everything negative. And as you go deeper in your, in your mind, you reach to the very bottom where all the gems or hidden powers, the values, the virtues, everything that you need is right there. You also have connection away from here. You also have a way to connect to that divine power, that divine light. And that's the doorway to connect to that divine here. Let's see, yeah, the gems. So a diagrammatic representation of this is like this. When you are in the superficial awareness of who you are, when you think that you are this side of the spectrum that I'm a body in uh, I'm, uh, I don't I'm not aware of my my being a soul at all I'm a body then you are riding these waves these waves are the thoughts these thoughts take your boat up and down these are weak turbulent forces that make you experience up and down of the life. Because there's a wind factor that takes you, that makes you feel that like that also. Something from outside, something happened outside, immediately you are affected. Because you're not connected with your deeper self. You're now only connected with the outside. Uh, and it's not very effective. It becomes successful. It seems like it is very effective in present world because it is too much. We have thousands of these negative uh, waves that affect us. And then this is the, uh, the representation of the, when you're connected with your deeper self, your thoughts are powerful and they are, you know, silent not very turbulent and your boat is you're riding very smoothly um, let me see okay one other aspect when we say i'm creating positive you know and the question is if i give you five minutes and say ask your question that create a positive thought you really have to struggle to create a positive thought because we are not in tune with our deeper self the more we study that I'm really at that inner powerful being and the more you experience, then the more you are able to do that. And so how we, what kind of thoughts we create, I will look, so let's look at that. Um, this one. So when I am in connection with my awareness that I am a body, then this is what I create. It's a tree of the, I'm sorry. Um, this one, yeah. The tree of the spiritual amnesia. 
I'm not aware that I'm a soul. That's my seed of awareness. And then from that seed, what do I create? You can see all the things that is negative. I have doubt, I have jealousy, anger, lust, greed, ego, competition, everything. So the thoughts associated with them, of course, negative. And then that's the, the positive tree. I create positivity. You know, and so let's just uh, take this one thought and be in silence. This is one example of thought, uh, positive, pure positive thought. When I transform, when I, the soul, transform, the world transforms. So let's just be in aware of ourself as a soul, connected to our deepest true self, well-grounded, and connected to that powerful being. And in that presence of that divine a power, I am slowly transforming, I'm slowly changing. The more I am in connection with that one, the more I am becoming clean, the more I am becoming strong. the negative emotions and memories that I held within me and the negative impressions and traits that I carried within me are slowly either getting destroyed or getting merged. And my subconscious, my deeper level of my mind is now clean. There is not much impurity. And this transformation is in line with the divine wish, in line with what the divine force wants to do. It is not a person, personal wish. And so it is a pure, powerful wish. And this powerful positivity is transforming the whole universe. When I transform the world, transforms. So I will stop there. If anybody has any question, comments, or insights, please unmute and share. Vinod, could you give some examples of, because I, I really appreciate how you clearly um, stated the whys 
why have positive thoughts and the effects that it has on the body, on our disposition, on productivity, on relationships, and basically just feeling good. <laughs> um, and then what are the values of the different types of thoughts? You know, what is positive thinking? And then of course, um, how one could um, develop this habit or, or, you know, to observe and then um, begin to exercise positive thinking. And, um, and I really appreciated the diagrams, the different ways of um, showing what a thought could look like, the negativity in the metaphor of the water and the waves. And so now um, I'm wondering if you could give some examples um maybe life examples your own personal or even a just a, an objective example um of day-to-day -day, um scenarios of and then how i might change because this is so valuable i really understand it um and you know like i had mentioned we have so many positive thinking uh kind of classes out there in the feel good meta, you know, market. Um, so I'm wanting to know a little bit about what that would look like. And you did mention like being in traffic and you're a half hour late for a meeting and you're stuck on the freeway. How do you find, how does, how do these steps of being standing back, observing, and then where do I gain that power from? How can I can begin to observe my thoughts? And, um, and there's so many types of thoughts, as you had said, and maybe even the negative. And I loved how you had mentioned, I'm just sort of summing it up here for those of you who, who may have come in midway here. Um, uh, now I lost my train of thought. Sorry. <laughs> I loved how too, like I took it lightly, even though I'm, you know, just take it lightly. You're, you're, um, okay. You're in front of a class and you're, you're trying to sum up a talk that someone just gave and then you lost your train of thought, but just to keep it light. You know, that kind of an example, and that would be mine, I guess, since it's happening right now. Um, and I think there's a lot of merit in that to not be so hard on oneself. You know, I, I wonder if we could start a little conversation here on just life examples, how this can show up, you know, some scenarios. Like, yeah. what do you do when you're stuck in traffic and you're a medical doctor? You got. You can't afford to be late for some of these things. That's right. That's right. That's really important question. So yeah, I haven't been stuck in the traffic too many times, but I have been uh, in situation where I am. I had to rush to to be at you know work. Uh, I can compare my past and now. Now that I meditate on a regular basis, the way I uh, respond is differently than in the past. In the past, I would definitely get very nervous. I'm half an hour away from the work and I had to rush and I uh, speed, you know, uh, and I have to worry about the, the traffic police, all that. But now I take it easy. If I'm in that situation where I am, I'm running late, fine, let's not, let, let me not create another uh, mistake. First of all, I did not plan it well. Okay, let me, as if step number one, let me not create another one. And then uh, this thought will stop me going in the wrong direction, first of all. And then I come back to my, you know, my peaceful self and I tell myself that, okay, who I am really 
and what my goal is. I just remind myself that I need to be, I'm a peaceful being in this body and I'm going for work. Something good will come out of, the, of this. That's the thought I give to myself and I try to be uh, more silent. But the real life example I can give you, uh, it's not just one example, it's a daily that I, I uh, experience this because uh, previously also I had shared that I see almost uh, approximately 50, today I saw 61 patients a day, 61, because if somebody did not come, so I had to take care of their patients too. Uh, 61 patients doesn't mean that you rush through them. Each and every of those 61, if you ask them, they had said it's, they probably were satisfied how I took care of them. So the way I will deal, I, I will uh, interact is cut out what is negative, what is not needed, just cut that out practically in my mind also. The person may be angry, person may be, uh, each person that comes in, they are complex cases. These are 61 complex cases. Some of them are easier, some of them are more difficult. Some of them have problems in their life or whatever. So you're trying to solve 61 problems in one day. In an average, I, I see uh, 50 of them. And then that's their problem. And then what about my problem? What about the staff? What about my skills? So all this, you need to uh, put it together. How do I- 61 patients, if in perspective here, isn't that like eight minutes per person? Yeah, yes. And those eight minutes are total focused eight minutes that I give. For me to do that, I need to cut out anything negative that is occurring in my mind because I know this is the place where I can really mm -hmm. overload myself and then get heated up and then I can't take care of them. So nothing negative can occur. Total focus with silence, inner silence. Then I can really focus. This is what you need. This is how it is. Smile. Give them the best that you can. Make them feel good. That's how. So being, uh, acting out as a soul is what you do daily in and out. And the more you do that, more practice you get. That's how I do. And so, it's, I, well, I, I guess to, to underline, it means soul consciousness. I'm just asking what, what does that mean? Yeah, and so it is like I was explaining before, it, it, we are in, on a spectrum from being, uh, we are soul in the body, we know that theoretically, but how really I feel where I stand. I stand on this side or this side or in between somewhere. So instead of being a total body conscious, I'm a soul in the body and more acting like a body, I be more like a soul. I'm a soul in the body. I'm more aware of my silence side and then now I interact. Then I have, I bring this silence out in my action, my peace, my love, you know, my joy. Oh, that's great. Yeah. I, that's really beautiful. It's it's almost like um, the, a lubricant of the soul, <laughs> yeah. The lightness and the soul consciousness um, helps you to maintain that clarity. I'm and just as you were showing the turbulent waters, it's very difficult to have a reflection in that turbulent water or see to the bottom of that turbulent water to access these skills that you need to see 61 patients in eight hours, you know? That's so right. um, to be able to, 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 yes, it takes practice. It takes baby steps. And, but um, we also have skills and to have them available to us 
I need to be calm, don't I? Yes. Yeah. yeah. The calmness will allow you to see uh, go to that bottom that you were mentioning. Uh, hi. Uh, go ahead. Uh, yeah, I just want to say thank you to uh, to the doctor. Uh, so I'm I'm, an, I'm amazed that you saw 61 patients and then spoke for one and a half hours with so calmness. So I <laughs> really appreciate that. <laughs> I would have gone crazy. <laughs> uh, it, it just uh, amazed, like how many times you meditate every day? Uh, well, it is a there's a practice called as a, um, being karma yogi. Uh, so mm -hmm. the goal is not to meditate so many times a day. The goal is to be in the meditative stage as long as you can. Uh, so it's a meditation in action. That's what we right. learn. So you, of course, in the morning, we, ha we have a set time to meditate morning and evening. Uh, 45 minutes in the morning and 30 minutes in the evening. Uh, but in between this, it's a continuous yoga. The more you are aware that you are a soul, you are more in a meditative state. I want to just a lighter, on a lighter sense, I want to ask a question to myself. When I said 61 patients, if uh, a pair the one who pays us, if they hear this, they'll start to audit me right now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> they will say, wow, 61 patients. Okay, let me see how you saw them, right? Right. I, okay. I'll explain. I'll explain. Uh, what it is, is um, I, I really feel uh, a great, uh, I was very reluctant to come to California to my, the, the place, this workplace. But I really feel good about being in this work right here. Because we are unknown people, nobody knows us, but we are great people, I know that. Because in the town of the Bakersfield, if you, if you say pain management, this is us, we are the ones, nobody else. There, there are other people, but not as big as we are. But we are still unknown like underdogs. Nobody will listen to what we have to say. But we know we are doing larger good. You know, we are, thousands of patients come to us. Almost eight, 9,000 patients has come, uh, we take care of. And they keep growing. But what I want to say is, the system is set such a way that I'm seeing, I may be seeing somebody for two minutes, for example. But I have 18 staff more than 18, I'm just saying number 18 or maybe more, 25 staff who, as soon as the patient puts the, their foot inside the clinic, these 25 people work on that patient. I see the patient, but before I see them, 18 of them have done something to them. Somebody has taken their temperature, somebody has taken their blood pressure, Somebody has asked them whatever questions. Somebody has made sure they don't have COVID. Somebody has taken care of the billing. Somebody has written down some previous history. So I'm just seeing, I'm just overview. Oh, this is what it is. This is what the patient problem is. This is what we need to do. Done. Two minutes. So it is like how a president will do. You know, president is not doing everything by his hand. But he's doing it. We know he's doing the good things. So we are, we we work like that, and so it is valid. So they, they cannot audit us. Now, yeah, but now you could say that even makes it more complicated because you have a team. Yeah, it's up to you, and you are also managing a team at the same time as assessing by the information that you get from this team. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. And I know I have a full confidence in this team. It's not like uh, they are uh, freelancing. They they are well trained team. Mm -hmm. So thank you.